Hello everyone, we got a weird video today and it was actually requested to me on Twitter. We are revisiting iHealthTube again. Yay, my favorite channel. This time they're presenting an absolutely outrageous claim that the sun doesn't actually increase your chances of skin cancer. No, no, no. Instead, it's your sunglasses that do that. Ah, it's gonna be a good one. Quickly now, roll the video, I can't wait another second. Heal Yourself with Sunlight is the title of your book that goes against current thinking in terms of the value of sunlight. Mm -hmm. It used to be called heliotherapy, it was what yes. you said. Yes. Could you tell us about that? Yes, uh, heal yourself with sunlight here is just a natural phenomenon that most people are not even aware of that are exposed to the sun. Heliotherapy. This is basically treatment using light. Depending on the condition, doctors can use specific wavelengths, control exposure for different times of day, and apply it to different parts of the body. There's indeed a science to it. At first, hearing that using light can treat diseases sounds like outrageous pseudoscience, but it's actually not, surprise surprise. For example, psoriasis can be improved through the exposure of ultraviolet radiation. Sleep disorders can be mitigated by controlling the patient's exposure to light. The list is quite large for the number of diseases heliotherapy can treat. However, that doesn't mean it can do everything. Let's listen to what this guy has to say about light therapy and cancer. We're scared of the sun. We're scared of the sun now because you know, when they first introduced sunglasses, which by the way mm -hmm. started triggering a massive increase of cancers. You heard it here first, sunglasses cause cancer. Now what people say well, has sun, sun, exactly. you know, sunglasses to do with cancer, well it has everything to do with cancer. You are filtering out certain rays of the sun which are supposed to enter, you're, you're blocking them out and the pineal gland which receives the, the light uh, in a different color formation, that means the entire spectrum of light. Okay, so we're getting into some pineal gland nonsense. In case you guys didn't know, some people call the pineal gland the third eye, and opening this third eye can give you superpowers or some shit. Of course, I don't think this guy thinks that's the case, but he's certainly putting emphasis on this pineal gland. So what is it exactly? It's a part of your brain that is responsible for melatonin production, which is the hormone that makes you sleepy. So if you have some disorders that mess up the function of the pineal gland, you would have irregular sleep patterns. Anyway, what did he say about the pineal gland again? and the pineal gland which receives the, the light uh, in a different color formation, that means the entire spectrum of light. Well, actually, the pineal gland doesn't receive light itself. It is dependent on these neurons called intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, which is located in the retina of the eye and is different than the regular rods and cones we are familiar with. These neurons sense the majority of its light through a photoreceptor pigment protein called melanopsin. Melanopsin is most sensitive to short wavelength visible light, namely blue, and less for longer wavelengths. So from this, we know two things. One, you're wrong when you said that the pineal gland senses the entire spectrum of light. And two, I nitpick too much. Um, it is necessary for, for the body to have that light. That's why we have a lens that breaks down the white light into seven colors. Well actually the lens just refracts light so that it can be focused on the retina. Mm -hmm. It gets encoded with, these colors get encoded with chemicals in the pineal gland and then they pass to the different parts of the body which are needed for basic metabolic, metabolic processes. Whoa, 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 a lot to unpack here. Let's break this down one by one. You first said that these colors that are received by the eyes are encoded by the pineal gland with chemicals? How do you even begin to do that? How in the world can you encode photons with chemicals? That's not really a thing, unless you're talking about the pineal gland just releasing chemicals in response to light, which is kinda true, but not really. When the eyes detect light, the pineal gland is actually inhibited, so it produces less melatonin for the body. That way, the person can stay awake during the day. Pretty common sense. On the flip side, it is the lack of light that stimulates the pineal gland to release melatonin. Tip of the day, if you want to feel more awake in the morning, open your blinds and let sunlight stream into your bedroom. It'll wake you up faster. The second thing he mentioned was that this light combined with chemicals travels through your body and allows your cells to perform basic metabolic functions. I don't even know where to begin with this honestly. If you're talking about melatonin, then yes that would have an effect on the body by causing us to be sleepy. There is also another function of the pineal gland that actually has some influence on the pituitary gland but I doubt he means that. He was talking about metabolic functions of the general cells in the body, which is completely outrageous. Cells are controlled by many factors, which includes electric signals from neurons or hormones from the bloodstream. Some cells may require one or the other to function, but functioning is different than metabolic processes. He's talking about breaking down glucose, fats, and whatnot for energy, and using this energy for cell survival. That's metabolism, and that surely isn't controlled by a dose of melanin. No matter how you look at this, it's pseudoscience. And uh, you make blood, you know, red light is involved in that. You make bile, green, uh, green light is involved in that. 
Are you serious? You don't actually believe that, do you? I'm starting to think you are actually aware of the nonsense you are spreading, but chose to do it anyway. The color of blood is due to hemoglobin, a protein found on red blood cells. It utilizes iron to bind and transfer oxygen. When the iron is oxidized by oxygen molecules, it gives off a red color. That's why blood is red. Bile is dark green because of pigments located in it called bilirubin and biliverdin, which are yellow and green respectively. The colors of these are absolutely, most certainly not obtained from the light that are received by your eyes. Now also you have to allow UV light to come in. Um, when you do that, you are producing a hormone in the brain that is responsible for um, the melanin production uh, mm -hmm. in your skin. No, no, no. Melanin is not produced in the brain. Melanin is produced by melanocytes, which are cells located at the skin's epidermis. This process is called melanogenesis, and it happens independently of the brain. So that's where your skin pr uh, protection occurs. If you are not uh, producing that, your skin becomes susceptible to even sunlight. Your skin will always be susceptible to sunlight. And yes, melanin is protection. When you tan under the sunlight, that's because your skin needed more melanin to reduce damage from the ultraviolet radiation. More melanin is more protection, but that doesn't mean you should stand outside all day under the sun hoping to get more tan. Because melanin is to protect you from the sun, the body produces more melanin in response to it. However, initial exposure is still damage to the skin. Don't avoid the sun entirely, just know when you should put on sunscreen. So if you're not getting the UVs through your yes. eyes and the pineal gland. Let's say you wear sunshades. Mm -hmm. you are, the body thinks it's dark outside. Okay. And then it doesn't make that hormone that is responsible for producing okay. the melanin to protect your skin. See, here's the thing. Melanogenesis happens in response to UV light, yes, but it's not detected in the eyes. It's detected by melanocytes in the skin. I don't know if this is because you've gotten melanin mixed up with melatonin, because I've sure gotten that confused a long time ago. Since this UV light detection happens at the skin, wearing sunglasses isn't going to affect anything. Sunglasses. 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 So, the other thing is, you know, and the, the light is needed. Uh, there is now research to show that every cell communicates with every other cell through light. Biophoton. Interesting that you brought this up. Yes, biological tissues do produce some visible light, but it has not yet been shown that cells in the human body can communicate through this method. This actually has been studied for multiple decades now, but nothing solid has been discovered and replicated. Just so you guys know, there's actually a field of pseudoscience associated with biophotons. Some people think you can heal the body from many diseases such as malaria just by using biophotons. If you ever hear someone claim that, please tell them why they're a piece of shit. Every year you have changed all the cells in your body. Every single cell, there's nothing old left in you. Actually, the statement is false. While most organs in your body can be replaced in a few years, some neurons in the brain are never ever replaced. Never. Never ever. Ever. Um, there are studies after studies, which you can read up in, in my sunlight book, Heal Yourself with Sunlight, um, that show that every e disease, uh, including severe illnesses like MS, mm -hmm. MS, is a multiple sclerosis where the myelin sheet, the fatty sheet around the nerves, it diminishes and that damages the nerves and then you have no, you know, you have diminished motor or sensory uh, okay. you know, responses. So your body is, uh, after a while, you end up in a wheelchair and then you may even die from it. So it's a very common thing now because we have been told stay out of the sun. Right. Multiple sclerosis is a pretty scary disease. It essentially is the demyelination of neurons in the brain and spinal cord due to damage. We have fatty cells that wrap itself around the axon of these neurons called myelin sheets. Without going into the physics of it, these myelin sheets allow faster transmission of an action potential through the axon, essentially speeding up the processes of electric signals in the central nervous system. So if these fatty cells die, then action potentials are much, much slower. Now there are multiple suspicions on what causes MS, but scientists don't really know for sure. We do know that genetics play a huge role, as well as exposure to a few environmental factors. Sunlight actually has been suspected to affect your chances of MS. Some speculate it is the lack of vitamin D. Of course, that's much different than what this man is putting forth, since he believes that sunlight just promotes a bunch of cell functions. If MS is truly affected by vitamin D, that would mean it has more to do with a vitamin, not so much directly with sunlight. A vitamin supplement would just do the job. And from all the speculations we have on what causes MS, MS, which we do have quite a list for, to single sunlight and vitamin D out like that is just dishonest. So vitamin D plays a major role in the uh, sustenance of the um, 
the myelin sheet, the nerves in the body. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why wouldn't you advise people to take vitamin D supplements? Why tell them to expose themselves to the sun? I mean, sure, that's one method of obtaining the vitamin, but many people are going to interpret your sayings to an extreme and hang out in the sun all day, potentially to prevent a disease they won't get while increasing their risk of sunburn and cancer. Your rant on MS just now also has no connection to the melanin you were talking about. You spend so much time telling us that the body needs to produce melanin for better health, and then you completely forget about melanin and instead talk about electromagnetic fields, which I cut out since I thought it was irrelevant, and other things like myelin sheath damage. The thing is, sunlight doesn't have the power you think it does. Sure, it may be useful in moderation, but it's not going to perform miracles. You also fail to explain how this all has to do with cancer, so I feel like I got clickbaited by the title of your video. Anyway, I'm done. Before I go, I would like to thank everyone who supported me on Twitter and on my YouTube community section. You guys are awesome, and I decided to push through my pain to get this video out because I feel like I owe you guys this. I guess what I wanted to say is, I love you all.